Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for September 30th, October 1st, and October 2nd. This is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, when I am doing the weekend readings, I will use my Rodley Valentine Angel Tarot cards. I will pull one from my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards. I am using now my, what is this, the Doreen Grant, Doreen and Grant uh, Virtue um, right? Is that, that's Doreen Virtue and Grand Virtue, the Angels of Abundance cards, and of course my Emily Anderson crystal deck. Now, for the overview, and this is the overview. So if you've never watched before, if you're not familiar, I do an introduction that I tag on all of the readings. If you want to bypass, and I hope you'll watch it just once at least, then just go right down there to the um, description and you can then bypass this introduction. For this introduction, I will use my Weight Rider tarot cards and I will pull one from my Osha Zen tarot cards. I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy. But remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like, leave the rest. I'm an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power, God, Holy Spirit, and just let whatever it is that needs to come through, come through. Now, I have uh, I have also um, had to update my computer again, and you know that usually creates some problems with my sound. I checked, I tested it, I checked it out, it all sounds fine, but you'll let me know if it isn't, okay? Okay, so for the weekend, let's see what we have here. Septem we are in Mercury retrograde, but Mercury will be going direct and it will be in Virgo. It's still in Virgo, and it likes to be in Virgo. So it will go direct on the 2nd of October. Now, we still have a two-week shadow, retrograde shadow. So it is kind of like an extension of retrograde as things are trying to, um, you know, revisit where it has already been through, and it's trying to get to where it needs, you know, where it can go forward again. So retrogrades do appear to go backwards for, for however long it had to be. for That was September 9th, I think, or September 8th. So for the, um, you know, for the 20, what would that be, 22, 23 days, it has been going backwards. So it's going to take about two weeks at least, if not more, to get where it was before it went retrograde. But it is in, um, it is going to go direct in Virgo. It likes to be in Virgo. Virgo is an earth energy. Mercury likes to have communication. It likes to, um, it's about your electronics, but it really does feel very um, at home in Virgo. So that's going to be October 2nd. However, on the 30th, and while it's getting ready to go direct, it does slow down. So we have some slower energies with that retro, um, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of going deep into that karmic energy. Remember, this is a time that I feel, you know, Mercury ret goes retrograde three. I think this year it will start its fourth time. So it goes three to four times a year. Mostly it's three times, but I think this year we're going to start at the end of the year a fourth, you know, retrograde. However, you know, when it goes there, I feel like Mercury retrograde likes to dig things up from the past. It likes to bring the past into the present. It's also a lot of it has to do with um, just with, you know, karmic resolution. Now, so we still have, like I said, that two-week thing. However, again, however, September 30th, Mercury retrograde, it's at 24 degrees in Virgo, will be opposing Neptune, which is also at 24 degrees Pisces. Neptune and Pisces, the, you know, very much the deep, the deep understandings, the spiritual understandings. And we are transitioning from, um, you know, you've all heard about the age of Aquarius. We are transitioning from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. Pisces has a lot of, um, has a lot of religious connotation. And there's some, so there's a lot of deep spiritual religious type of connotation with Neptune in, po in Pisces and something going on. So we could be hearing about something very interesting around the 30th of September in that, you know, in that mysterious spiritual realm, hence my, my background. <laughs> anyway, the 1st of October, we have Venus, which likes to be in Libra. It is opposing Jupiter, it, which is retrograde in Aries. They're both at three degrees. So 
when I first saw that, when I was looking at that, the first thing I saw, I thought of was just like two dogs. Okay, and I know they're not two dogs, but this is how this is how these things come to me. So I saw this little, cute, adorable little yappy dog, you know, tiny little thing, and this really big, I don't know, floppy-eared, um, you know, I, I don't even want to know, I don't know if you want to call it a Labrador or whatever, just kind of this big, tolerant dog. So the, the, little, pu- the little puppy in itself would be more your Venus in Libra. The big, tolerant dog was your Jupiter in Aries. Okay, and I heard this little little yuppie dog kind of like saying, come on now, what are you doing? You know, you got to get things moving. We've been waiting enough for you. Get things moving. And the, you know, and the other dog kind of listening and then like, okay, okay, I will. Take that as it will. I do feel like Venus in Libra, you know, like I said, it's in opposition. So it is, it is trying to prod, push, um, yap at um, Jupiter in Aries and trying to get things moving. Jupiter is the planet of um, enlargement and planet of good fortune. Aries, again, is that, you know, the fire energy. Uh, Venus is relationships, very close relationships. In some ways, Venus can be uh, can be very much harmonious. Libra wants to create balance. So it's kind, like I said, uh, I felt like little Venus was, was up against um, big Jupiter and just kind of nagging it to pieces and saying, let's get moving, let's get things going. So that would have been October 1st. So let's see. And then again, October 2nd, um, Mercury will be going direct. Okay, let's see what we have here, though, as the overview. And again, if you want to bypass this, go to that, uh, you know, the timestamp. Let's see what we have for the overview for the what's going on in the world. Always remember, whatever's going on in the world, you still have to live your life. Um, You know, you still have to stay positive. You still have to, you know, work and keep your vibrations on the higher side. The higher you keep your vibrations, the more you are like Teflon and things just fall right off of you. When you want, you know, if you are, if you're keeping, you know, if you're, if you're miserable and if you're sad and if you're just kind of in a hard or tired, okay, you know, tired mode, then that's what you really will be attracting. So let's see. Our first card we have is Judgment. That is a major arcana. Judgment can be on the harsh side sometimes, but after we face it, after we face the things that we have to face with Judgment, it actually clears things out. And again, I was talking, you know, I talked about Mercury in retrograde and, you know, and then even in the shadow of Mercury. So it's kind of like things have to be cleared out. Things have to be seen. Things have to be acknowledged. Things have to be, you know, really weighed and measured. But once it's done, it's done. Okay. And, you know, and then you can then move on with that. So we have it reversed. Reversed has a lot of energy to me. So this is a card to really pay attention to major arcana so we have the 20 numbers are very very important too numbers can be used for dark energy or light we use them for the light Um, so this is a two zero two has a crossroads it has choices also decisions it could also be you know coming together with a partner zero is god source energy now the interesting thing these are roman numerals and it's a 10 10 transition transition And that is something that judgment does do. Now, um, we can look that the people, they're very vulnerable. They're naked. They're naked as a jaybird. (laughs) But they're very vulnerable. You know, I mean, you know, nobody wants to be naked. I don't want to be naked. But it's just basically bearing it all. Bearing it all to higher power. And, you know, a gray energy is here. However, her hair, you know, some of the hair does have this um, color to it. Um, we do have this angel that's very, um, you know, divine, heavenly angel, and, you know, trumpeting in something that is, you know, to move them. Now, part of them, I don't see any of them hiding. I see them really embracing the changes that come with judgment. However, with judgment, you do have to bear it all, okay? So let's see what we've got next. We have our page of wands. Now, court cards. This is where I go into all the cards, more or less, the energies. Court cards do have dual energies. Pages, underlying energy is Earth. Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. Money, job, career. Okay? Tangible energy. Now, this is also Wands energy. 
Wands is, wands or rods, is our fire energy. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Passionate, burning, very determined. Now, you can also see that there's a little bit of arrogance in this person. Now, pages are very enthusiastic. Pages love to get, you know, love to get into the mix of things. Pages are also bring the herald, bringing the herald's messages also. So this could be, you know, this could be a new message. This could be something coming about um, with that work energy, that earth energy, plus that fire energy. I'm looking at him though, uh, him, and I guess this is pages can be, you know, uh, feminine or masculine, but this is a masculine energy here, and you know he stands very um, upright. He stands very proud in his, you know, in his finery type of thing. He has his rod. He is, you know, he has his head up. Now, whenever you see the page of one in general, it does mean some, you know, pages, like I said, means a new opportunity, new, something new to do with your work, job, career. But then however the wand or whatever comes on top of it is how you approach it. So the, you know, this is just kind of like grabbing it. This is grabbing the attention. This is going for whatever it is you want to go for. And, you know, again, there is this looking up. There is, you know, it's kind of like I'm looking up. I'm not faltering. I'm moving forward. Okay. So this is a, this could be an opportunity for the world to really be, to really embrace and be very enthusiastic. But it's kind of like, again, too, once you've committed the world, whatever the world is doing, whatever the universe is, it's like this is a commitment. This is a commitment and it's like I'm going for it. Okay, oh, so what, like I said, pages do, does have the underlying energy of earth. Knight's energy is fire, so that is the wand's energy. Um, you know, like I said, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, the queen's energy is water. That is Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, fluid and very emotional, very caring energy too. And then we have the king's underlying energy, which is air, swords energy, and that is Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. Thinking things through, very strategic, a little bit linear, not necessarily, doesn't necessarily see, you know, doesn't want to really look at the, uh, the other options, just really going for what he wants to go for. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Well, now we have the Page of Cups. So again, underlying energy, Earth. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, money, job, career. So whatever this is, this has to do with, like I said, our earth, our earthbound energies. But now we have cups, which is again water, which is again Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. So there is a quizzicalness to this. There is a not quite sure what I'm supposed to do, but you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. So while there is a very there, while the Page of Wands is very assured. The, um, the Page of Cups is kind of like, really? What am I supposed to do again? Well, okay, you know, but, and also is feel, you know, is feeling things very deeply. Now, I do not feel any, um, insecurity here, but there is something new on the horizon. There is a new turning, um, in the world energy, in the earth energy per se. It's going to affect us kind of differently at the same time. One of it's going to be like, okay, let's go do this. This is great. We want this. We have the ability. We have the, you know, we are, you know, we are, we are it. And then the uh, page of cups is kind of, is like, really? Really? You know, what is this fish doing in here? And are you talking to me? So the quiz, you know, the page of cups um, you know, does have again a you know does you know the pages like I said will go after whatever this is. Um, the page of cups is just going to kind of look at things a little differently, and again it's going to be kind of like really, not quite sure what I'm supposed to do, but okay, we're in for this. We're in on this. Okay, let's go on and see. See, but I do think there's a lot of vulnerability with that judgment. There is a new, the judgment does bring a new chapter, a new, you know, section of the book, maybe even a new book in the series. And the Page of Wands and the Page of Cup, they're, 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 they're like, okay, we're committed. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. May not necessarily understand everything, but at the Page of Wands is very much so, hey, I don't, I don't have to understand it. I just know. So let's see what we've got with Osha Zen Tarot. What we have going on with the Osha Zen with Osha Zen Tarot cards. 
what do we have for the world what do we oh okay and that's another one now this card that has fallen on the ground is pretty unique it's not it's unique to osha zen tarot and it brings the master it brings the master so we have the moon energy where we know that we don't always know what we're supposed to know. So there is some faith energy here. This master energy, you know, what is a master? A master is someone that has experienced many things. A master is somebody that knows many things. Um, the master could be, you know, is very connected with higher power, uh, spirit guides, so whatever this is go whatever this is going on, there is a stronger energy that is guiding this. There is a stronger energy that is leading whatever it is that is going on the weekend. There is a stronger energy, a higher energy, higher power energy. And um, you know, we have to look at him, you know, and we have to we have to hope, we have to trust, we have to have faith. There is wisdom in his years also so whatever this is going on there's it there's more going on than what we're gonna see okay does that make sense anyway anyway interesting weekend as always interesting energies as always the Schumann resonance has been back online it hasn't really shown a really a lot of big white uh, it has been, you know, kind of the greens and the blues with a little bit of the streaking. So if something changes with that, and, you know, and even that in itself is kind of that, you know, we're all feeling like we're in this, um, you know, like time is ticking, 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 and we're waiting, waiting, waiting. Anyway, take a moment, please, to like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. I really appreciate your comments. You know, I always do. And, you know, this helps keep... This helps keep me encouraged by you, you liking and sharing, okay? Okay, so why don't we go ahead and start our readings now. And hello to my Capricorns. How are you doing? Okay, keep holding on. Keep holding on, my Capricorns. Things are shifting. Things are changing. They are, they are, they are. We just have to keep holding on. You can feel the change, but then it just always feels like... Oh, yeah, but it's still hard. Yes, it's always hard. My Capricorns, you are always the workers. You are always the one that settles things down for so, so many people. Just keep moving forward. Keep focused. Okay, so let's see what we have. Keep focused on your path. Okay, let's see what we have. Higher power, what do you have for my Capricorns here? My Capricorns, one, two, and three. This one is reversed. So let's see what we have. Because this weekend, this weekend has had some bizarre energies for all of the signs. Some have been positive and some have just been, oh, let's get through this. Let's get through this. So let's see how what has to happen for my cappies. Here we go. Well, the king of earth is a good energy for you. The king of earth is really a very positive energy. It's an abundance energy. It's a money energy. It's a Midas touch energy. So king's underlying energy is air. So we have that air energy, Aquarius, Libra, and um, Gemini energy. So there is some strong, really dedicated stuff. But earth is your energy it's taurus and virgo so you so you've got these really two very very strong energies pushing you forward pushing you into making some decisions pushing you into possibly this could be a brand new job this could also be uh, meeting you know this could be meeting somebody that's going to help you it could be a financial advisor it could be a lawyer it could be a doctor so it could be a professional energy here too but it could also be i'm kind of feeling my campies that this is something that's pushing you Okay, I feel like this is one of those times where you're going to be able to ring your bell. I kind of feel, you know, I kind of get this ringing the bell energy. This is, um, you know, a way, this is a subject matter expert. This is somebody who knows how to money manage. Okay, so this is also, you know, this king, this king knows how to make money. Okay, I feel like that has a lot of Capricorn energy written all over it. Anyway, generous professional, responsible, practical, okay? A successful time, confidently accept opportunities you're offered. The Midas touch. So there could be, a, this could be a new career opening. This could be a new 
job opening. This could be a new money-making opportunity. Again, if it's I don't do financial advice, so if it's something that's money, you might you know, make sure you check it all out. Okay, okay. Anyway, next card is the Queen of Water. So now we have the we have a royal couple here, but they're different energies. Water energy is our Cancer, our Pisces, and our Scorpio. Pisces with Neptune. That's really very strong this weekend. Now, this is, you know, emotional, it is fluid, it's very, very loving. This queen of water will sacrifice. This queen of water will do what is needed, okay? If this, you know, she's just going to do, I, I'm, you know, normally the queen of water is very maternal, very loving, and it, it still has that. But I do feel like my queen of water here is going to sacrifice. She's going to do whatever is needed. However, she still stays in her integrity, it stretches her, so don't you know? Don't think I'm asking having you do well whatever is needed. And no, no, no. He, she still stays in her integrity. She's still doing things out of love. She, but also too, she, you know, the Queen of Water has a lot of feminine energy. And one of the things that's really very strong, and I feel like I need to say this for whoever might be hearing this, that um, you know, you know, I'm going to say a praying mother is one of the strongest energies in this universe. Okay. So now we all have feminine and we have masculine energies. So I'm, you know, even though I'm saying it as a praying mother, if you, you know, if you have this, if you embrace this, whoever puts that out, your energies can be extremely strong. So regardless, okay, here we go: tender-hearted, empathetic, patient, and loving. Relationships develop to a new level. Trust your intuition. Care for yourself and others. So, you know, between the two, these are very well connected right now. And the King of Earth might be coming because of the prayers of the Queen of Water. I'm really getting a very spiritual vibe from this Queen of Water. So, you know, however you want to put it. Like I said, you don't have to have the same beliefs as I do. I'm just giving you my language. You can take it and turn it into whatever it needs to be for you. But I feel like this has been a very spiritual quest. The Queen of Water has been really, she's been putting her heart, her life, everything out there. I feel like the King of Earth has a lot of answers for her. Anyway, last card is reversed. Let's see what we've got. We've got the King of Water. Now, again, I told you what the underlying energy for the King is, air. And this is water again. The King of Water. Again, masculine energy, feminine energy. But it really doesn't matter if you're male or female. We all have both of these energies. Okay, some have a little more of one over the other. The king of water has gone through the mill. The king of water has, has suffered, but yet has known, has known laughter, has known love, but has known loss. The king of water has gone up and down in the roller coaster of love. But the king of water, you know, and the king of water feels things very deeply too. Also rationalizes it. You know, between the king of earth and the king of water, the, they know, they understand, their understanding is that much greater okay, than possibly their feelings. But the king of water knows to trust. The king of water knows that there is more out there than suffering. <laughs> I know, I'm saying, wow, wow, my campies, I don't know what this is about. But the king of water knows that happiness is around the corner. The king of water knows that it's also part of it is your viewpoint, is part of it is your per, uh, perspective, okay? So, so you've got some royal energy here. You've got the king of earth, king of water, and you have your queen of water. So there is a lot of emotions, a lot of, a lot of spiritual energy. But this king of earth, he, he's somebody that can take, you know, he can take, he can take straw and turn it into gold. Okay? So I feel like there's a lot of prayers being answered with this. I feel like the queen of water, her spiritual energies, have, it's like she's been heard. Okay? So the queen, the king of water is trustworthy, compassionate, respected, cultured. Open your heart and mind to those around you. Trustworthy and heartfelt advice, charity work. So we have the king and the queen and the king. Interesting with that. Let me know who and what this is. That queen of water, though, has been very spiritually, oh, okay, has been very spiritually strong. And now we come to authority. This is the emperor. This has, this is number four is, you know, is um, leadership, stability, organization, authority. The authority, when I see the emperor, 
this isn't the emperor, but this is, but he is, he does have a holy energy around him. He is very, very strong. I look at this as, you know, while we're talking about, you know, um, the feminine energies, this is again masculine energy. And the um, emperor to me has a lot of divine masculine energy so you know kind of like where we might have the you know the the mother the father and the son this has a lot of that father energy that let me take care of business now energy and again we are in mercury retrograde so there is something very stabilizing with this energy this is not the this is not the masculine energy of this world this is the masculine energy of the earth and he wants to take care of business he wants to get things done so my Capricorns, what is this all about? I mean, you've got the royalty here, but then you have the universal here. So it, again, it does feel like you are being heard. Your prayers are being heard. There is a lot of, um, you know, things happening in a way. There's a lot of stability coming into your life. But again, you have to, you know, you have to keep, you know, or more stability than maybe you've had. How's that? How's that? But, you know, that king of water, you know, even though he's got a lot of water energy, he does say to open your heart. Okay? Let me know. Let me know what this is. Okay, let's see what our Angels of Abundance has to say for our Capricorns. Interesting that you only have the four, but again, that has stability, leadership, and organization. Things coming into your life, stabilizing. Um, maybe somebody coming in to help you, and maybe somebody helping you to organize. Anyway. Let's see what we've got. Deservingness. Deservingness. You are a beloved child of God, like everyone else, and you deserve to receive the support that will allow you to focus upon your, life, your divine life purpose. Even if you can't yet recognize your lovable qualities, trust that God and the angels can see how amazing you truly are lovely that is lovely well let us see my yeah my capricorns this is a little bit i mean there's there these are authority energies all of these are authority energies here and you know they're taking care of business for you they're taking care of business but this has this is a higher energy this is an even higher energy than than the king and the queens and the king <laughs> again deservingness you deserve good things. Here we go. What crystal or energy for my Capricorns do we have here? Oh. Labradorite. And that has shamanic journeying, which is always interesting. Brave, magical power, higher awareness. Stay close with your higher awareness. Things, this is, a, this is an interesting one for my Cappies. Things are happening, again, very strong spiritual here, very strong um, authority energy here. You know, there's some money energy here too, very strong universal energy, and that de deservingness, I like that too. Anyway, my Capricorns, tell me what that means to you, because this was a little bit different. Anyway, like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. As always, my Cappies, my Capricorns, know that you are loved, stay shining, and be blessed. Bye-bye.